CBS News presents A Black America, the final broadcast in its seven-part series. Portrait in Black and White with Hal Walker and Charles Kuralt. This broadcast is brought to you by Xerox Corporation and its worldwide affiliates who are in the business of making it easier for people to understand one another. Before presenting tonight's program, which was produced under the exclusive supervision and control of CBS News, here is Mr. C. Peter McCullough, president of Xerox Corporation. Good evening. This program will explore some of the things that white Americans and black Americans think about each other. How we think about each other is a matter of urgent concern because it affects how we act. To help blacks and whites achieve a better understanding, Xerox is sponsoring a series of seven programs using the medium of television to reach the widest possible audience. There will be no further interruptions. At Xerox, we believe that understanding the world we live in is as much our business as the world we work in. And in that spirit, in hope for greater understanding, we feel very privileged to share this evening with you. Now, Portrait in Black and White, with Charles Kuralt and Hal Walker of CBS News. Here is Charles Kuralt. Good evening. Tonight, CBS News takes a deep breath and plunges into a pool of statistics. Six earlier broadcasts of this series of Black America have delineated the race crisis in pictures and words. This seventh and final broadcast steps back and views this most central crisis from a distance. Someone once said that sooner or later, all words decay into imprecision. So do pictures. No one who's had a television set in America needs a primer on race relations. The films of violence come night after night. So does the rhetoric about law and order and justice. This is the fifth summer of violence. And by now, both words and pictures seem worn out. For this reason, and with the hope that scientific discipline might be of use, CBS News commissioned a poll which attempted to measure racial attitudes in the United States statistically. What we were after was the answer to a few basic questions. How much white racism is there in the American people? Are the black extremists the people to whom the blacks look for leadership? How do the races feel about each other? These are questions about which people have strong hunches but little knowledge. For this reason, we ask you to listen to figures, numbers, percentages, at the least, this is a calm way to understand what is happening to this country. Before we go to our findings, a few words about polls. My colleague, Hal Walker. The CBS News poll was conducted between May 22nd and June 16th of this year. This was the period when the Poor People's March was in Washington, if your memory needs a checkpoint. The Opinion Research Corporation, commissioned by CBS News, conducted personal interviews with a nationwide sample of whites and blacks. Whites asked questions of whites, black people interviewed blacks. The survey is based on a sample of a thousand people. Like most surveys of this kind, the figures we report are accurate to within a few percentage points, and they reflect the general feeling across the country. Our poll is quite different from a political poll. People change their minds very quickly about candidates and issues. But on basic issues involving race, minds change slowly. On attitudes toward race tension, the CBS News poll checks out with earlier surveys on the same subject. A great deal of the supposed dialogue going on between the races has become monologue. Say race relations to most white people and they want to talk about riots. Say race relations to most black people and they want to talk about discrimination or white racism. There are two great fears haunting this nation. White people fear something they call black extremism. Black people fear something they call white racism. The balance of this broadcast addresses itself to these two fears and to some common ground we found between the races. We're going to measure white racism first, black extremism second, and then we'll talk about some hopeful signs in the common ground. First, the extremes. First the measure of what the black community fears most, opposition to equal rights for Negroes, prejudice, and racism, defined generally as an assumption of superiority and discrimination with overtones of hostility. 
Hal Walker discusses this extreme in the American mind. We begin with white attitudes that underline the racial problem. The white of today is being asked to answer for history. This Midwestern housewife, like a lot of white Americans, does not think the Negro should present history's bill to her. We hear so much about the slavery. 300 years ago, our grandfathers were slaves, or 200 years ago, our grandfathers were slaves. Well, for God's sakes, did we have anything to do with that? I had no part in it. I had no slaves. My folks didn't. My grandparents didn't. Are they blaming us for what happened three years ago? Let's forget the past. Think of the future. Build up the future. And why keep hemming and hawing over the same thing over and over and over again? And they say, you must give me land because my grandfather was a slave. Well, then I would say, for God's sakes, find the man who had your grandfather as a slave and then demand the land from him. Don't bother me because I had no part of it. Few people would be willing to make amends for the actions of ancestors they never knew, for evils committed long before their time. So our survey is about people who are here today. Across the country, we asked whites whether the main reason Negroes had not made more progress was because of racial discrimination or because Negroes have not worked hard enough. This lawyer expressed a view we heard most often. We find there is the reluctance upon the part of too many Negroes, particularly among the young to take the hard and remunerative jobs that must be necessary to earn a living. There is a feeling that for some reason somebody owes them a living. Just about half of whites in our survey said the Negro has not made more progress because he has not worked hard enough. Only 15% blames discrimination. Some had no opinion. I feel that they're basically uh, lazy when this summer, for example, opportunity was given to them to better themselves in getting as many jobs as possible uh, in various uh, fields of retail, uh, wholesale, and they don't take the full advantage of accepting the responsibility of going out for these jobs. They feel that they're not good enough for them. About half of whites agreed with this woman, that Negroes tend to be lazy more than whites. And this woman mentioned another charge against Negroes, that they have low morals. Their sex problem, let's face it now, um, how many white people have 10 illegitimate children? Very few. Very few. Uh, this, is, uh, this seems to be uh, a trend with them. Uh, and I, I often wondered what happens to these here men who follow these children? Are they busy making babies elsewhere, or are they busy in a civil rights march yelling for their civil rights? And four out of ten whites in our survey agreed that Negroes more than whites have low moral standards. However, half or more of whites disagree with some of the views you have just heard. For example, they reject the idea that Negroes are more likely than whites to have low morals. But for the moment, we're concentrating on attitudes opposed to racial integration. In Chicago, we talked with a group of whites who call themselves lower middle class. They are worried about Negroes moving into their neighborhood. And they are not responsible citizens. Until they live like we are, we don't want them. I don't want them to live with me, to tell you the truth. Whether they take care of them or not, I don't want to live with them. Because they ran away from them. And if I wanted to live with them, I wouldn't be paying high taxes like I am. I would have stayed where I was. More than half of whites in our survey believe Negroes are more likely than whites to run down their own neighborhoods. In the South, they throw the garbage out of the window and the pigs come and eat it. Here they throw the garbage out of the window and no pigs come and eat it. In general, are Negroes as civilized as whites? 43% of whites said no, Negroes are not as civilized. It's his image that he's building. They act like savages, like animals. They kill each other, they rape, and they run. There's a riot, well, they wouldn't burn their own places. They had signs all over, soul brother. It made no difference. They robbed, raped, plundered, looted their own people. What about the way Negroes care for their children? About one quarter of whites say that Negroes are less likely than whites to take good care of their children. The colored woman does not take care of her child, does not help to educate this child. There's no problem about it. They're ADC. The more children they can have, the more money they get to go out and play, 
the lottery, to get more money, go out and drink a little more gin, but to take care of their children and put a pair of shoes on them. I blame the mother for not educating her child when they're born, from the day they're born till the day they grow up. Lower intelligence. One out of four whites also believe Negro children are more likely to hold back the class. When you were in school, your mother made sure you did your homework before you went out. A colored child, if mother and father don't care if they ever do their homework. And I feel that this is why the white child is so much more superior to the colored. And not because the colored child doesn't want to learn. It's because there's nobody behind him pushing him. Lower intelligence. About one white in seven agrees that Negroes have lower intelligence at birth than whites. We're not all created equal. And as far as intelligence, uh, there is a little book called Breeding Down, and uh, it says in there where the, the colored is born with an IQ, not born, but it develops, to 80 plus, and the white is 90 and up. About half of whites polled said they do not think most fellow whites want the Negro to have equality. They don't desire an education of our type. They have different music. They have a different way of dressing. They have different schools or different uh, churches. Their religion is different. Everything is different. Sympathetic to the Negro, 38% of whites said they do not think other whites are sympathetic to the problems of the Negro. I don't want to help them. I don't want to help them. And I don't want them living next door to me for the simple reason that there might be a lot of nice ones, but I got four kids, and I don't want them growing up with colored next door to them. Because it's, it's a proven fact. They grow up, they think nothing of uh, each other, they play together. Pretty soon they're in their teens, they start dating, and pretty soon they're marrying. I don't want my kids marrying a colored person. We have just heard the views of a small group of whites who feel under great pressure from Negroes economically and socially. Some of what they believe is also believed by the majority of whites in this country. Other views they hold are not shared by the majority. For example, the white majority does not believe Negroes have less innate intelligence than whites or that Negroes have lower standards than whites when it comes to caring for their children and the ability of their children in school. We will hear more about these views of the white majority later in this broadcast. But it is significant that there is a minority, tens of millions of white Americans, who look at the Negro in an unfavorable way. In view of these attitudes, we asked in our survey whether whites think it would be a good idea to separate the races completely by setting up a separate country for Negroes made up of some of the states of the United States. Almost a quarter of whites said it would be a good idea. And how about a separate country for Negroes, someplace away from the United States? One third of whites said this would be a good idea. Well, the good Lord made it that way when he created the earth. He had different races on different continents. He separated us by water, by great parcels of land. And now we're so smart, we've just confused the whole issue. Many whites who might be against a complete split between the races nonetheless have no desire to see the Negroes come closer than they are now. For example, about half the whites said they would object to housing for Negro families in present all-white neighborhoods. And four out of ten whites say they would object to busing Negro students to better schools. We found when it comes to ways for the Negro to protest for what he wants, most whites are against Negro picketing or boycotting. In fact, against anything other than holding a protest meeting. When Negroes riot in our ghettos, what is to blame? The causes mentioned most often by whites have to do with ghetto conditions. But on the other hand, great numbers of whites say it is largely because of a communist plot, or that it's mostly young kids looking for excitement, or that it's a way for Negroes to steal things and not get caught. More than a third of whites say that when a riot occurs, it would be a good idea for police to shoot one or two rioters as examples to the rest. Shoot to kill. If they're old enough to violate law, shoot them. If it's my own kid, I'd say shoot him. He deserves it. He should obey law. If there's laws for us, there's laws for Negroes, let them start obeying them. They should be shot. That's the only way we can stop them. I, I can't see where the policeman has to stand there and uh, just hold his gun in his hand. And for what? Uh, they're breaking the law, aren't they? To review. 
What can we conclude about the degrees of white opposition to equality and integration for the Negro? About half of the whites in our survey say they do not believe most whites want equality. About one half of whites deny that discrimination is the main reason for holding back the Negro. About one half of whites say they do not want Negro families moving into all white neighborhoods. What about feelings of superiority to the Negro? About 14% of whites say that whites are born innately superior to Negroes, and about 43% of whites say the Negro is not as civilized as whites. What about attitudes that may reflect a degree of white hostility? About one-third of whites believe that one or two rioters, and rioters today for the most part means Negro, should be shot as an example to the rest, meaning immediate punishment without due process of law, contrary to American tradition. And finally, about one-third of whites believes that the best solution to the race problem would be the establishment of a completely separate country for American Negroes. In summary, about one-half of whites indicate attitudes that oppose equality and integration. About one-third of whites go even further to express feelings of superiority and hostility to Negroes. The second group, according to dictionary definition, could be called racists. Who feels this way? It could be anybody in any part of the population, except that he is slightly more likely to be older or less well-educated or from the South. Now, black militancy. Charles? White segregationists have maintained that what the Negro really wants is not integration, but separation. Most of us whites grew up with the assumption that anybody who talked that way would be regarded as anti-Negro. Not so anymore. Now, one measure of the gap between the races is the extent to which Negroes themselves have given up hope for integration and are turning to the concept of black nationalism and black separatism. We're so busy caring about them. Yeah, that's right. People, don't use the word, don't, don't use the word black power, you scare white folk. How many times they call you nigger? You tell them not to use the word? Some black militants, like Stokely Carmichael, former head of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, are urging Negroes to build their own separate politics and economics on black pride and black power within the black community. As for white America... We must start to turn our backs on this country. We've got to turn our backs on this country. Yeah, tell them like it is. This country has never cared about black people. That's right. They don't give two dams about us. And all of us always turn around worrying about what's good for America, what's good later for America, what's good for black people. That's yeah. what we want. Yeah. Yeah. In every major city of the United States, we have seen violent protest and the fires of discontent. And we've heard ominous predictions of future armed rebellion and revolution. We stand on the eve of a black revolution, brothers. Masses of our people are in the streets. They're fighting tit for tat, tooth for tooth, an eye for an eye and a light for a light. The rebellions that we see are merely dress rehearsals for the revolution that's to come. We better get ourselves some guns and prepare ourselves. We are told to stop mourning Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., because his crusade for racial integration was out of date, even before his assassination. After his death, Floyd McKissick, head of the Congress of Racial Equality, warned that nonviolence as a philosophy is dead. Stokely Carmichael was quoted as saying, America must be burned down in order for us to survive. Will it come to that in the end? The message of black nationalists and extremists is coming through loud and clear. It does not reflect much hope for a reconciliation of the races. But to what extent do Negroes actually support extremist doctrines? The premise of black separatist argument is that blacks must build their own society because whites do not want equality of the races and are not even sympathetic to Negro problems. But do most Negroes believe that premise? First, we ask Negroes, do you think most whites are sympathetic or not to the problems of Negroes? They might be, and then again, they might not be because they don't act it. They don't act in no way to try to give us any kind of help. The majority of Negroes agree with this woman. 59% say whites are not sympathetic to the problems of Negroes. Next, we asked, do you think that most whites in this country do or do?
do not want complete equality for Negroes. I doubt very seriously that, that, that a, a white person would want to accept me as an equal today. I mean, they say they, I have a, a, quite a few white friends that say they would accept me as an equal, but when it comes right down to, to it, I can ask one if he would accept me as a son-in-law or accept me as a neighbor on an equal basis. And I doubt very seriously if he could answer me truthfully and say yes and mean it. The majority of Negroes, 67%, say whites do not want complete equality between the races. So it seems that most Negroes do agree with the contention of black separatists that whites are unsympathetic to Negro problems and do not want racial equality. It's difficult to see how this opinion could prevail without some feelings of resentment, anger, even hatred. But does this mean that the majority of Negroes are ready to turn their backs on white society and accept the doctrine of black separatism? Some blacks are demanding a separate nation for Negroes outside the United States. Others, like the leader of the African Nationalist Partition Party, the self-styled Chief Ogunche, want a nation for blacks carved out of this country. Uh, the states that the party has selected, if you will, uh, I can call your attention to the map here, is uh, the 12 original uh, Confederate states uh, of this country. Essentially, we consider those people as living on uh, the trespasses. Uh, they've been living there to a great extent uh, through the benevolence of our people. So it is now that we feel that our people should take stock of situations as they are uh, and analyze it uh, and demand that these people remove themselves from that area in order that we might set up our uh, government there and, of course, in final analysis, form our nation. Two questions in our CBS News survey dealt with proposals for a separate nation for black Americans. We asked, is a separate country for black Americans outside the United States a good idea or not a good idea? An overwhelming majority of Negro Americans say a nation for blacks outside the United States is not a good idea, and only 5% approve. Well, what about a separate country for Negroes within the United States? This idea was opposed by about the same majority. 87% said no. Some typical comments of disapproval. A separate, separate Negro company is out of a question. We all got to live here in this world, all of us. And it's impossible for this world to be separated. Impossible. I think it's horrible. I think it's the worst thing that they can really set up. We're asking for equality. How can you have equality setting up a state of your own? Uh, I feel that we will lose more uh, by separating than we will uh, if we plan for total integration or if we fight for total integration. Uh, I don't believe in the separated states, no. The 6% of Negro adults in the nationwide CBS News survey who favored a black state either in or outside of the United States translates into more than 700,000 Negroes. In a campaign to change minds, 700,000 people who are so alienated by our society as to want to leave it can exercise a force which must be reckoned with. Still, the great majority of the nation's 22 million Negroes now are opposed to the idea of a separate black nation. But do they support the militant concept of complete political and economic control by Negroes of black communities within our society? Do they agree, for example, with the statement of the Reverend Albert B. Cleague, Jr. of Detroit, who told us what blacks want? He wants control of black communities. That's why the word black power is meaningful to black people and frightening to white people. Black power means the power to control your own destiny. That's what black people want. They want to control the community, the economics of the community, the politics of the community. We're tired of having white representation, you know, represent us downtown in city government. We're tired of having white merchants take care of our business. We're tired of having white teachers in our schools, white principals, white administrators. We want all of this to be, to be black. Are you in favor of black control of black communities? Our CBS News survey put that question to a cross-section of American Negroes nationwide. The answer, about half of black Americans say they are not in favor of black control of black communities. 22% of American Negroes support this idea. Why do the majority of Negroes oppose it? What we're concerned with is proper representation. And uh, if a white man is able to better represent 
a Negro or a black man, then this is the person we should have to represent us. If a black man is the best representative we have for not only the blacks, but for the whites or for any other ethnic group, then this is a man that we should have. What I feel is this. I can work with any white man. Any white man can work with me if he respects me and I respect him. Now, for example, what I'd like for my people to have is not black control, but power in their community to do the things that are right, to do the things that are necessary to see that their children get a basic education. Now, you take that suit you have on, no black man produced that suit. You take the shoes you wear, no black man produced that. You take that tie you have, no black man produced that. What we must do is become producers, and then when we become producers, we will have power. What I would like to see is in the black community that there be white and black ownership or black and white ownership and together we work to make the funds that are necessary to give us the community, the schools, the churches, the homes that we need. The results of our CBS News survey on the question of black control of black communities are corroborated by the recent survey of the President's Commission on Civil Disorders. The Commission found that both in their personal lives and in issues concerning public institutions, the majority of Negroes polled in 15 major cities oppose racial exclusiveness. For example, only one Negro out of five said stores in a black neighborhood should be exclusively owned and run by Negroes. Only one in seven believed that schools with mostly Negro children should have a Negro principal. And only one in seven said he preferred to live in all Negro or mostly Negro communities. The indication of the polls is that the majority of Negroes are more interested in integration and equality than in separation of the races. The question is, how far will they go to achieve their objective, and whom will they follow? Our CBS News survey listed the names of 11 Negro spokesmen who have been called leaders of black America. We asked, which of these is a leader to whom you would give your active support? Only four of these 11 men received the approval of 10% or more of American Negroes. Whitney Young, Executive Director of the National Urban League. Uh, uh, what we are seeking, I, I would think, is not uh, integration, uh, but an open society where people have the freedom of choice and the options that every other American has if they choose to remain in segregated neighborhoods uh, then I think they have a perfect right to do so without the concurrent uh, inferior services and facilities and institutions. Ten percent of blacks say they approve the views of Whitney Young, whose Urban League has pressed for job opportunity, better housing, and education for Negroes. He opposes violent tactics. Carl Stokes, mayor of Cleveland, Ohio. It isn't charity that is the problem of the unemployed. It isn't charity that is going to meet the needs of that unemployed person. The only thing that is going to meet it, in fact, is the availability of a job that offers the kind of mobility and incentive that is going to give that person a chance to become productive and to know that he can move up this vertical ladder of ours in this great affluent nation of the United States. Mayor Stokes is generally regarded as a moderate. He favors integration, opposes violence. 12% of American Negroes say he reflects their views. Roy Wilkins, executive director of the NAACP, the biggest and the oldest of civil rights groups. You can elect the kind of government, and of course everybody says, oh, voting is old hat, legislation is old hat. I don't know what is new hat except revolution. Now, if revolution is what you want, as Samuel Goldwyn said, include me out. Wilkins and the NAACP have worked for legislation to end discrimination, to integrate the Negro fully. Wilkins opposes violent tactics and rejects black power because he says it implies anti-white. 25% of American Negroes say they share the views of Wilkins. The Reverend Ralph Abernathy. All of these run-down shacks that we have to live in, all of these rats and roaches that we have to live in. We are sick and tired of it. We are going to march 2,000, 200,000 strong on tomorrow. And then Reverend Ralph Abernathy is the successor to the late Dr. Martin Luther King as head of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. 
Abernathy led the Poor People's March on Washington, which was underway at the time our survey was taken in June. Fifty-three percent of Negroes say they feel the same way as Reverend Ralph Abernathy. He is the only Negro clearly approved by the majority of black America. He is for integration and represents the essence of the nonviolent approach. Our survey also revealed that some of the best-known Negro spokesmen have the least support. For example, Stokely Carmichael, an advocate of black power and black separatism. Eight out of ten Negroes say that they've heard of him, but only 6% say they approve of his ideas. Another example, H. Rapp Brown, also a black separatist. He has preached hatred of whites and urged violence as a weapon of protest. Seven out of 10 Negroes say they have heard of Brown, but only 5% say they approve of his views. It may be fair to conclude that black extremists and separatists have received more attention from the news media than their strength in the Negro community commands. The question remains, just how militant are the majority of Negroes? What tactics will they support to end discrimination and achieve integration? Our CBS News survey questioned Negroes about the tactics of peaceful demonstrations and boycotts. A large majority of Negroes say they would participate in these activities. About two-thirds would participate in peaceful demonstrations and in boycotting stores. We asked about the tactics of picketing. Almost half of black America says it would participate in picketing stores and businesses. Finally, we asked a cross-section of American Negroes, would you be willing to participate in a demonstration that might lead to violence? The answer, only one out of 33 American Negroes say they would participate in a demonstration that might lead to violence. Looking just at ghettos in six cities, the President's Commission found that 8% of ghetto Negroes said they would join a riot. But the Commission estimates that 18% of ghetto Negroes did, in fact, join riots in these cities. Asked whether they believe riots have stimulated action to solve Negro problems, 20% of the city Negro sample said yes. In summary, we found that about one quarter of Negroes can be defined as militant. They include not only incendiary radicals, but also law-abiding Negro citizens deeply dissatisfied with white society. However, the great majority of Negroes still seem to want integration and are willing to push hard to end discrimination. Only a very small minority of Negroes approve of violent tactics. But extremists contend that increasing numbers will turn to violence if nonviolent methods fail. That is the threat America faces. Of Black America is being brought to you without commercial interruption by Xerox and its worldwide affiliates. And now, to continue tonight's program. Now here again is CBS News reporter Hal Walker. In the main, we have been discussing thus far what each of the major races of this country fears. White people fear something they call black extremism. Black people fear something they call white racism. We have reported tonight that about one-third of white America shows varying feelings of superiority, discrimination, and hostility toward blacks. That means there are about 35 to 40 million adult white people who could be called racists. Whatever black extremism is, our poll indicates that up to 700,000 Negroes may be perfectly willing to resign from the United States of America. That about three times that many Negroes say they want complete black control of black communities. The least that can be said is that there are more than a handful of extremists in this country, both black and white. What of the center? First, the Negro center. Charles? The Negro Center, the majority of American Negroes, wants, as you have heard, integration and equality. It does not want the separatism advocated by extremists. Second, the majority wants to achieve integration and equality through lawful tactics. Nine out of ten Negroes in our survey do not approve of violent methods. A businessman in Atlanta, Georgia. Burn down a street. To, to burn down your home to try to prove, uh, prove a point. Um, I don't know if this is the best way or not. I feel that uh, we, can, we can pressure the federal government to 
enact certain laws that will give us relief. It appears that the majority of Negroes have not discarded, as some extremists have, the strategies of nonviolence which the Negro has used to gain his rights thus far. Our survey also indicates that in their calls for separatism or revolution, the radicals may be overestimating Negro dissatisfaction in some areas of life. When we ask Negroes whether they were satisfied or dissatisfied with the kind of education their children are getting, 42% said they were satisfied. 29% said they were dissatisfied. Some had no opinion. Family income, 43% said they were satisfied with their family income. 50% said they were dissatisfied. Jobs, 50% of American Negroes satisfied with their jobs. 20% dissatisfied. 70% of Negroes said they were satisfied with the neighborhood they live in. Only 25% said they were dissatisfied. These figures may be interpreted in different ways. White conservatives may use them to defend the status quo. But our survey also reveals that whites are somewhat more satisfied than Negroes with their children's education, their jobs, incomes, and neighborhoods. Black militants say many Negroes don't know how badly off they are. Does black America tend to put all the blame for the Negroes' problems on whites? Our CBS News poll asked Negroes, which do you think is the main reason Negroes have not made more progress in this city? Discrimination because of their race? Negroes haven't worked hard enough? Both? 45% blame discrimination. But a surprising 22% said Negroes have not worked hard enough. And 18% said both. Negroes frequently made this criticism of some Negro men whose families are on welfare. Some of them hide behind so-called separated from their families. All right, he ruined some place. And when they get this check started, then he starts to come in, living. He gets the check. I ain't got no sweat. I don't have nothing to worry about. The government's going to pay off. That mailman will be there. Them fellas watch the postman better than the dogs do. Sure they do. Negro self-criticism does exist. But when it comes to comparing themselves to whites, few Negroes accept the white racist view of black inferiority. In their answers to our CBS News poll, the great majority of American Negroes say blacks are born with equal intelligence and are just as civilized as whites. We're all human. We're all peoples. The only one God. One Bible for us to divide by. So why should it be different? It's the colors are only different. If I had to be born all over again, I would ask the law to let me to be born black and know what I am now. Because I really am proud to be a Negro and I would not want my uh, race to be changed no other way. No matter how bad I would be treated by the white. Growing black pride underlines the findings of our poll and other surveys. Eight out of ten Negroes in the CBS News survey said they believe blacks have played an important part in American history and the great majority said Negro children should be taught subjects in school that add to their feeling of pride in being black. Our survey reveals that blacks also want better reporting of the Negro today. About half of blacks said that present television, radio, and newspaper coverage does not report the Negro story accurately and fairly. It's not just news reports that the Negroes have in mind, but the general telling of events in Negro lives. Here recently, we are getting a lot of publicity. Some of it is very bad. Uh, some of it is good. So we, we see some of the good things that uh, Negro Americans are doing. Uh, but I think in a whole, uh, we're not getting the type of coverage that we should in order to uh, show our kids, uh, to teach our kids that they are a part of all of the surroundings, all of these good surroundings that they see on TV, uh, that they enjoy on TV and enjoy in the newspaper, the news media. If the magazines and if television and if these things were coming on with uh, very contrary statements, I could handle that and say that's propaganda. But to not see me at all represented seems to say something insidious and uh, hidden and harmful to a greater degree because uh, I'm not there and then I have to wonder, well, if I'm not there, maybe I'm not worthy. That the call for black 
representation and black pride comes from the great majority of Negroes, not just from extremists and separatists. Black pride reflects positive feelings of the Negro about himself and his heritage. In another broadcast of Black America, this 17-year-old from Washington, D.C. visited a classroom in Ghana and answered the question, why don't you come back to Africa? Okay, look, the first man that died in the Revolutionary War of America was black. Uh, in the Revolutionary Army, there were black soldiers. In the War of 1812, black soldiers. Uh, World War I, World War II, Korean War, all these wars, there was black men. Black men have fought and died for this land. We, as black men, are proud of being black men. We are not going to run over here and hide because the white racism is so strong over there. We're going to get ourselves together and we're going to change it. How long do Negroes think the change will take? How long before there's complete equality of the races in this country? Our poll results indicate that the majority of Negroes expect complete equality here within 50 years. Some typical comments on that. First of all, it's going to take Negroes the next five, seven, eight years to get themselves together, to stick together among themselves. In the next 10 or 15 years, we will have equality if we can get enough unity together within the Negroes right now. I would say uh, we will feel fairly comfortable within 50 years to move around the country the way we would like to. Oh, yes, it's going to be a better day. That's all my hopes. It's going to be a better day. I'm not worried. So we all just be looking for a better day. I would say 10 years at the most. And if not, the whole heavens and earth is going to erupt with violence. You see, we are not going to take this anymore for our children, our children's children. We. I'm 47 now, and I'm on the stand. And I'm teaching my children on the same stand. That if we have to go, just like Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King, it won't be on that basis. Peace. Peace. It won't be for peace. In summary, here is what the polls tell about the Negro Center. The majority of Negroes do not feel innately inferior to whites and are experiencing growing pride in their race. They believe whites are not sympathetic to their problems and that whites do not want complete racial equality. Yet the majority of Negroes do not want separatism, and they do not sanction the violent tactics proposed by extremists. They are more satisfied with their present condition and less militant than extremists would like them to be. But they are ready to press a lot harder for integration and equality within our society, and they expect that equality will come within a generation. Hal? The President's Commission on Civil Disorders concluded that racial division can be reversed. But the commission said, from every American, it will require new attitudes, new understanding, and above all, new will. The view of the Southern plantation owner, interviewed by reporter George Foster, reflects both the problem and some hope for the future. The white man has certainly been prejudiced, and to quite an extent, unfair. But customs die awful hard. It takes takes a long time, and everyone knew years ago that the Negro would have to be given equality. But in the South, knowing Negroes as we think we do, we realize it would take time. It's, it's been compared to, to straightening teeth. It takes a slow, steady pressure. You can't do it with a hammer. And, and white people's attitudes will change in time. I'm a lot more liberal than I was five years ago, and I know I'll be a lot more liberal five years from now, and I think almost everyone else is in that category. Already, time has produced a great change in fundamental white attitudes toward the Negro. For example, in 1939, a Roper survey found that 71% of whites thought that whites had more intelligence at birth than blacks. Tonight, as we reported earlier, that figure is down to 14%. Also, in 1942, the number of whites favoring school integration was three out of ten. By 1963, the last time this was asked in a survey, those favoring school integration rose to a majority, six out of ten. And according to our CBS News survey, 
14% of whites now believe that housing for Negro families in all white communities is a good idea. That is still a small percentage, but the poll of the President's Commission in 30 cities found that about half of whites in those cities said they wouldn't mind at all if a Negro family moved next door, if that Negro family had about the same income and education. I think if they were of the same background, the same social standing, and willing to adapt themselves to the neighborhood, I'd have no objections at all. Uh, I do have uh, Negro families in my neighborhood, and uh, I feel that they have the same interests as the whites, and their home is a uh, uh, upper middle class uh, area, and uh, they have the same interests uh, in uh, their home and their upkeep as everyone else's. They've gotten to the point where they are educated, and they can afford this type of home, and they can support it, and they have the same interests as everyone else in the, ne in the town, in the area, in the neighborhood. Our survey reveals that there is some commonality between the races. The majority of whites and Negroes do not want black or white separatism. The majority of both races do want more government job training programs for Negroes, an improvement of schools and teaching in Negro areas, birth control clinics for Negroes, and more attention by local government to help solve Negro problems. There is also some commonality in attitudes toward racial characteristics. For example, both races agree that blacks and whites are born with equal intelligence. This businessman speaks for about six out of ten whites. I believe the Negro is just as smart and just as stupid as the American white, and there are many enough stupid whites. I think uh, the tests show that uh, the Negro is definitely as equal as the, the white man in society. Earlier we reported that the great majority of Negroes believe blacks are as civilized as whites, are equal to whites in moral standards and in the care of their children. More whites agree than disagree with those views of the black majority. Again, commonality underlined in the comments of whites. Well, I, th I think that that's absolutely ridiculous, this idea that, that Negroes don't uh, have as, as good morals as whites, don't keep up their neighborhood. This is... Uh, not due to their being Negroes, but it's due, uh, in as much as it's true, to their being poor, and that poor people, poor white people, under similar living conditions and similar cultural conditions, uh, behave pretty much the same way. I don't think that this is a racial question. I mean, I feel that if they're given the equal economic uh, background, equal, equal economic opportunities, the Negro can be just as fine as the white person. The majority of whites say they believe most whites are sympathetic to Negro problems. And our poll results indicate that a majority of whites are aware of what these problems are. Some typical statements. The white man says that I've done it on my own, uh, let the Negro do it. But he doesn't realize that the Negro has an outstanding characteristic of color and that uh, that makes him, in this country, unequal right from the beginning. Yeah, I feel that the, uh, the Negro feels neglected in the fact that we do have a double standard of law enforcement. Now, the Negroes that I come in contact with complain that they don't have adequate police protection, that their daughters and wives can't walk the streets like the whites. Then I think uh, the white people on the same, uh, on the other hand, uh, they feel that uh, if a violation is occurring in the white neighborhood, they would be arrested immediately and that the police favor the Negroes because they're not arresting them for the same violation. But then the Negro, he feels neglected too because he really doesn't want that in his neighborhood. He wants law enforcement in his neighborhood. For, now, you mentioned about the riots. Now, do you think the Negro people wanted to have their house burned down, their houses burned down? Of course not. They were crying, pleading. Why don't you save us? But yet, the politicians misunderstood the Negro people. They felt they were all rioting, and they weren't. They were demanding protection. They didn't get it. Inevitably, we come back to the riots. In our survey, the majority of whites and blacks agree that two things have something to do with causing riots, overcrowding in Negro areas and a Negro rebellion against the way they're being treated. So burn, baby, burn turns out to be an SOS signal from one race to another, and the signal seems to be understood. Finally, what about the future? Here again, there is some commonality in the attitudes of both races. They agree that there will be complete racial equality in this country. The majority of whites say this will come within a century. And as you have heard, blacks expect it within 50 years. 
What will it take to bring about complete racial equality? There's going to have to be a drastic change of attitude among the whites. Uh, they're going to have to begin to respect Negroes as human beings instead of uh, just as a, a racial problem. I feel that the Negro himself has to lift himself up. So. And he has to lift himself up, work and whatnot. And I think that the white man has to recognize that the Negro is ready and willing to, uh, to work and to get places like any other race. We're going to have to have some more on-the-job training for a lot of black people who haven't had the opportunities that the white, quote, middle class, unquote, community has had. We must, we must let them into any area that they can afford. I think Negroes need to be educated and told exactly which way that they should be do done in order to fight. You know, we as myself as a Negro, we ask for integration. Government makes it possible for us to get integration. Now we have all these black power programs that's fighting for segregation. What are we really fighting for? I don't think that very much will be achieved nonviolently because the whole structure of the United States was built on violence and the white man acquired everything that he has today by violence, you see. So I don't believe that the black man can be nonviolent and expect to achieve equality or anything else soon. I believe that in, if we're going to bind up this nation, uh, these kind of people, intelligent people who are interested in the world, must become involved in their community and in the problems of the community, the chief of which is the problem of race. Now they look at the problem as, as so overwhelming that they can't do much about it. But I say that if you can do one or two things in your lives, daily lives, to, to solve a small particular problem, you have contributed to the solution. We ask these questions at the beginning of this broadcast. How much white racism is there in the American people? The answer is that white racism is a characteristic of a minority, but a dangerously large minority of whites and that it is receding particularly for young people. Most white Americans are not racist by dictionary definition. We asked, are the black extremists the people to whom the blacks look for leadership? The answer is no. Black people are listening harder to the extremes, but they haven't joined in numbers of dangerous consequence. We finally asked, how do the races feel about each other? And the best answer seems to be that in the main, the majority of each race is depending on the majority of the other race. It is a troubled union, but it is still a union. Charles? In a season of rotund oratory, we have tried to make you witness to some sharp, factual truths. Certainly, no one can feel very comfortable in a country where a third of the adult white population is racist by dictionary definition, and two-thirds of a million black people are willing to resign from the United States of America. But it doesn't seem to us that this is the danger. The danger is that a group of white and black extremists are seizing the debate for themselves. The advantage of the CBS News poll is that perhaps for the first time we counted the center and discovered the center overwhelms the extremes. Revolutionists and racists believe that the masses have to be led. Most Americans believe that the people lead. You have heard the people speak. There is commonality. There is hope. And there is still time. It is not yet five minutes to midnight, but it is clearly late in the day. For my colleague, Hal Walker, this is Charles Kiralt. Good night. CBS News has presented Of Black America, Portrait in Black and White. This broadcast has been brought to you by Xerox Corporation and its worldwide affiliates who are in the business of making it easier for people to understand one another. If you would like a copy of the questions and of the statistical tables which underlie this broadcast, send 25 cents and your address to Of Black America, Post Office Box Number 1, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10019.
CBS News would like to acknowledge the assistance of the following sources in the Of Black America series.